Good morning everyone. My name is Janne Koponen and I work as as a customer solution architect for Broadcoms, AIOps and monitoring. And today I'm going to talk about how to wrap an Android package file, an APK file, uh, which means that we are instrumenting that APK to also send metrics from the application to the uh, APM11 uh, App Experience Analytics solution for analysis. So right now I am looking at the launch pad for the solution and I'm going to click on the App Experience Analytics side of it to get into the front end metrics um, analytics pages. So to get to this one you'd hover on top of the left side menu and simply click on manage apps to be on the apps profiles that we have uh, created for the application. So the app profiles are simply places uh, where all the metrics are collected into from a specific app. So I'm going to click on the email provisioning one that I have here to be presented with this screen. So I have several options there. I have Android, iOS and web app. And in this case I'm going to be looking at the Android one where I've actually already wrapped an application. <clears throat> so this kind of illustrates how easy it can be to instrument your APK file and to make it send data to the application for analytics. So simply, I'm just going to click on that button to re-enable the default options, which is this screen here, what it looks like. So it can be as easy as simply clicking on the upload link there, navigating to your APK, saying open, and the application, so App Experience Analytics, will wrap the APK for you. And all the instrumentation, the default instrumentation for the application is done just like that in a few seconds. So that's it. The application is ready to go, and now you can download it, and you can install it on your emulator, <coughs> excuse me, or real device and simply use it. And the metrics will be sent to App Experience Analytics and APM as well for analytics. Now this works in most cases um, and it's a very quick and easy way of doing it. But in some cases you might not have the option of doing so. Um, it could be that in the APK itself, some of the options are set so that the so that the wrapping here simply doesn't work or doesn't produce metrics, particularly if in the APK obfuscation is used or the manifest file doesn't contain the right permissions, for example. And that is the reason why we also provide <coughs> the command line option. So when you click on the command line option, a different set of instructions pops up. And there's a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this. So what we are basically offering here is the opportunity to download the wrapper itself so that you can use it on your command line. So this is the file, the uh, CA Mobile App Analytics wrapper, the zip file. And what you also need is a plist file for that particular <coughs> app profile and application. And what this plist file contains is simply the URL for our collector and the tenant ID for App Experience Analytics and the application profile ID from App Experience Analytics to tell the SDK that goes into the APK where to send the information to. So once you've downloaded these two things, uh, you can simply unzip the uh, the wrapper and I'm going to go and simply show you what happens once that's done. So I've unwrapped it here and this is the file system that you will get. There is the original file and the rest of it is pretty much uh, appearing once you've unzipped it. So to speed things up I've already downloaded and moved the plist file here and I've also got my test APK over there. So what do we do next? So the wrapper contains a shell script. 
So this works on Linux, Unix platforms, also on Mac, it's a shell script, obviously. We can also do the wrapping of Windows, uh, and I'll show you uh, in a second how to do that. So the basic thing is, if you just type in the wrapper sage, it will show you the options that you have uh, whilst, whilst doing this wrapping on the command line. So you have the help message, uh, you can choose to intercept or instrument web calls or not. You can also define a debug option and you can also specify your own JAR signer configurations. So once the APK is, is wrapped, it won't be signed. Obviously, if you want to publish uh, an APK, it needs to be signed with your enterprise certificate. Um, there's a couple of other options like decompile resources, mainly saying that do not touch the manifest uh, XML in the APK. You can also decide to sign or not sign, even already at this stage of the of the wrapping. You can define your output file name, etc., etc. What I'm going to do now is to do a basic wrapping using the uh, uh, the wrapper sage. Well, actually, before that, I'm going to show you a couple of things that we need here. You need. Oops, you need this environment variable, which is basically pointing to wherever you unzipped the wrapper into the EMM folder in that particular folder structure. You also need Java home sets. Oops, let's do that in uppercase. Because without this, the wrapper's age will fail to find the Java executable. So once those two are set, we are pretty much good to go with the wrapping. So I have a ready-made command here. So I'm using the wrap sh with minus a, which refers to the apk file, and minus p, which refers to the plist file file. And I'm also deciding that okay, I'm going to have verbose outputs. So let's run this and see what happens. So the wrapper. In the background, it's an open source APK tool. It takes the APK, it unpacks it, it instruments the relevant default calls that we want to intercept, inserts our methods into the into the source code, and then repackages the APK and provides it for you to use. So that's pretty much done, and we will have a file called wrapped and the original name as the result of it. And you can simply take this and for debugging purposes, drop it into your emulator and see what it does. And I'll show you that in a few moments as well. The other thing you need to do if you want to actually start using it is to sign it. So this is a separate process because obviously the wrapper at this point doesn't have your enterprise security certificate. So uh, the signing of the APK needs to be done separately. But that's essentially the two very quick and easy ways of wrapping an APK. So you either upload it straight into the uh, App Experience Analytics UI, or you download the wrapper and the plist file, put it into your local census or Mac, for instance, and Windows even, and you wrap it here manually. Uh, it also gives you the manual wrapping here gives you more leeway with the additional options like we just saw before so you can you can decide yourself whether you uh, whether you can you, sorry you want to forego the uh, resource checking for instance or you want to sign etc etc so I did mention as well that you know there is another way of doing this on the command line, which is basically using the jar file directly. So the jar file that we are running in the background is that MAA Android SDK wrapper jar file. So running that is it's an executable jar file. So you can run that simply with Java minus jar uh, with these options for example that you have in front of you so you have minus apk pointing to the apk file plist the plist file and then you can specify rules so in this case they're auto detect there are different rules basically xml files in the uh, wrapper emm config folder 
So by using auto detect, we are telling the jar file that okay, whether this is an Android, pure Android, or is it a hybrid, doesn't matter, just detect which one it is and use the relevance XML file with the configuration and inception of those uh, of those events in the APK. And we also define the default jar signer dot properties there and a couple of other things like build site debug and no rest so no resource checking. And I'm also designing not to sign this resulting uh, APK file. So that works as well. It gives uh, perhaps even a little bit more information about what's going on whilst we are wrapping the APK. But nevertheless, the end result is the same. So we have the wrapped APK here and you can start using it directly in uh, in the emulator like I said or a real device so essentially wrapping meaning inserting the default interceptions into the APK is very very easy all right so going further from here it doesn't suit every organization. Some people, for instance, want to make the wrapping part of the build process of, of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, Android Studio, for instance. So I'm going to dwell a little bit into that. But before we go into that, I'm going to show you a couple of things in Android Studio about what could go wrong. So first of all, I mentioned the permissions in the manifest file. So these highlighted permissions are the ones that our SDK needs to function properly. So this is well documented and I'll point, out, point you out to the documentation uh, where this is all listed. The other thing I mentioned there was obfuscation. So if obfuscation is used, we need to tell Android Studio that don't intercept our classes. So basically putting that into the pro card rules or dex card rules file should actually allow the uh, SDK to function properly. I'm not using it, so I'm going to keep it commented out. Okay, so two things here. Uh, first of all, I mentioned that you can also integrate the wrapping itself into your build process. So to do that, you need to have a couple of method stub files. So we have uh, these camdo callback here and camdo integration files in parts of the projects in Android Studio. So if you look at those, they're just simply method stubs for our uh, both the uh, default uh, API and the custom API calls. So what this also provides you is an opportunity to further instrument beyond the default instrumentation. You can start doing um, extended data collection, any string values, any numeric values, business transactions, customer IDs, customer names, etc. etc. can be collected using this extended API. I'll show you that in a minute. Before that, I'll go into how to make this thing part of the build process. So I mentioned that these two files, first of all, are needed. Second of all, <clears throat> you need to apply the plugin. And that's connected to a couple of other things. So uh, let's have a look. Where were we? Uh, okay. So do, 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 do. you need to include some jars there, first of all. And, 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 and. Where was I? Okay, sorry. Yeah, you need to add your wrapper into the class path, which is happening here. So this is taking place in the build gradle, the project file build gradle. And then in the application build gradle, you start defining what you want to do with the wrapper. So you need to add <coughs> this function here. So what we're looking at here is creating a new wrapper task, and then we start setting up things. So we are setting up the EMM home here the same way we did on with the uh, manual command line wrapper. We define where the plist file is, also the sign config, and then we start defining uh, additional options. These are not needed but can be used. So no resource check flag is set to true. I'm also setting <coughs> the verbose true. My build type is set to debug. And there's a couple of commented out things. 
So I can also decide to rename the output file into something else. I'm not particularly keen on that at the moment, so I'm just going to leave. So once you've done that, <coughs> excuse me, you can assemble the uh, the projects, and the result will be that as part of the build process. The task there will kick off and it does exactly the same as it does with the manual command line wrapping. So it will extract the APK, it will instrument it, and then it will package the uh, instrumented APK again. Uh, in this case, I'm also signing it with the default certificate. So the the wrapper will insert a default dummy certificate for testing purposes. But again, if you're using this for real, you need to replace the dummy certificate with your own certificate and sign it using the uh, zip, uh, jar sign and zipper line. But in this case, we've had the successful build and we have the wrapped SDK for our per use. So just quickly show you more information about this is available in Broadcom's uh, tech. Docs. So if you just Google Tech Docs uh, CA or Broadcom um, uh, Android SDK Gradle, you will find this page quite easily. So with that, I think the last thing I really wanted to show you was what happens when we actually use the wrapped app. So like I said, three ways of wrapping the application. Upload it into the uh, AXA GUI, download the wrapper and plist file themselves and do the wrapping manually in command line. Or three, integrate the wrapper into the actual Android Studio Gradle build. So the end result is the same. You will have a wrapped application, which I am running here on my Android emulator. So it is called the text change, fairly simple thing. And because I've already used this before, you can see that in the ADB log cats, we have quite a few CA MMA messages. And these are the ones now in debug mode, in verbose mode, that pertain to the SDK functioning. I'm also collecting screenshots, which is this binary information here, compressed, which has been sent over as part of the, part of the JSON. So I'll click around here a little bit. Uh, go back again, minimize and maximize. And at this point, you can see that the JSON payload is being sent to the AXA collector. And the information is, is going to be shown there uh, for analytics and troubleshooting, etc. So with that, I'm going to probably finish this session and uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you later.